Hey kids, this week I wanted to show you a video that my kids made once with their friends when they were stuck at home. It's called Super Kids. I'm a superhero flying around. No need to worry, you're safe and sound. Battling evil, fighting for good. I'm a superhero in your neighborhood. Get in there, Maddie. This will be a great hit for the newspaper. Have you seen the new, new edition of the newspaper? No, been too hard working on this uh, hotel. Well, it's really great. We finally caught that criminal Maddie. Someday, this town will need our superpowers to save them. That's true, but until then, we'll... we'll keep our secret identity safe. You're the construction site worker and you're the news reporter. <laughs> this play is almost over. Now don't tell anyone.
teamwork. Oh, and here's all the money. Good job, superheroes. It was nothing. I think I know of a great reporter who would make a great story about this. <laughs> Joseph and Caden were brave to take on that villain, Allie. Hey, do you know who else was brave? Paul. We've been talking about Paul and his travels to tell new people about the good news of Jesus. Everywhere Paul went, he found some that believed, some that didn't, and others were just downright mad. I mean, in some cities, Paul got beat up or ran out of town. That didn't bother Paul because he knew the important thing was to tell others about the good news of Jesus. Well, the time had come for Paul to return back to Jerusalem to tell others about his travels. We find that in Acts chapter 21 and 22. On the way back, they met a prophet named Agabus. Agabus came up to Paul and took off his belt. He then wrapped his hands and his feet up, and then the prophet said, this is what will happen to the owner of this belt when he reaches Jerusalem. Agabus said that the Holy Spirit told him that Paul would be arrested in Jerusalem. That caused Paul's friends to say, hey, Paul, don't go to Jerusalem. But Paul was not afraid. In fact, hey, can I get a little help in here? You see, Paul wasn't afraid of being arrested. He had experienced that once before, remember? In fact, Paul said he was willing even to die in Jerusalem for the sake of Jesus. Time out. What gave Paul such courage? I mean, he is acting really, really brave right now. It reminds me of the bravery that Jesus had on the night before he was crucified. Jesus knew that he was going to be arrested and killed, yet he allowed that to happen because he knew it was God's will. And I'm sure glad he did because it's by Jesus' death that you and I are saved. And it was Christ's example on that night that gave Paul the bravery to have in this moment when he was heading towards Jerusalem. Let's see what happened once he got there. Time in. Just like everywhere else, Paul had some people who liked his message and others didn't like his message. In fact, in Jerusalem, there were some people that were so mad at Paul that they began rumors about him that weren't true. And these rumors caused a riot in the city. So much so that when the Roman soldiers came out to stop the riot, they arrested Paul for starting it, even though he didn't. Paul ended up in chains, just like Agabus had predicted. Things did not look good for Paul, but Paul was not afraid. In fact, he asked the soldiers if he could speak to the crowd from his chains. And that's exactly what he did. While being tied up, he preached to the crowd about the good news of Jesus Christ. Even in that scary time, Paul was not afraid. He knew that God was with him. And listen, this is not going to be the last time that Paul is in chains. We're going to hear more about that next week. But here's what I want you to learn this week. We can have courage because God is with us. If we are facing something scary, we can be like Paul and be comforted that God is right there. It says in Joshua 1.9, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. After the video, talk with your parents about things that might make you feel afraid. Then see if you can come up with ways that might help you have courage in scary times. Reading Joshua 1.9 again might be a good place to start. But first, let's pray. God, thank you for being with us in scary times. Please give us the courage to live boldly for you and your son, Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Take care, guys. We'll see you next time. Please send help.